Um, but the wheels of justice turn slowly sometimes. And that was the case here, and, and, but they, they got it done. 27 years after rapper Tupac Shakur was shot to death in a car in Las Vegas, a man who confessed to his involvement in the crime is behind bars. Who shot Tupac? I keep it for the cold of the streets. It just came from the back seat, bro. Filmmaker Mike Dorsey predicted an arrest on law and crime nearly two months ago. I think that they are going to close this case. I, I think that there is very likely going to be an indictment. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy. Las Vegas Metro Police took Dwayne Keefe D. Davis into custody Friday. He's being held on charges related to the 1996 murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. Las Vegas Metro Police searched Davis's home in Henderson, Nevada in July. This is the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. We got a search warrant, search warrant for the resident. You need to come out with your hands up and your hands in At the same time, a grand jury was investigating Tupac's murder. Tupac Shakur was shot as he was riding in a car driven by Suge Knight one night in September 1996. Tupac had gotten into a fight with a man named Orlando Anderson at the MGM Grand during a Mike Tyson fight. The shooting of Shakur was believed to be retaliation for the fight. Keefe D later confessed that he gave Anderson, who was his nephew, the gun to shoot Tupac Shakur. He made the statement in a proffer to police, but the statement could not be used against him in court. Years later, Keefe D admitted his involvement in Tupac's murder in his book, Compton Street Legend. Many view the book as a confession. Keefe D wrote about that night, I pulled out the Glock that Zip had given me and tossed it in the back seat. Bubble Up did the driving, Baby Lane and Freaky were riding in the back. Like two rams locking horns, Suge and I looked each other dead in the eye. The terrified expression on Suge's face read, damn them N-words. He goes on to write, one of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started busting back. Tupac Shakur died days later and his murder would remain unsolved for years. Orlando Anderson was shot to death the next year. Filmmaker Mike Dorsey worked with retired LAPD detective Greg Kading on the documentary Murder Rap, which looked at Kading's investigation into the murders of Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur. I spoke with Dorsey about the news that Dwayne Keefe D. Davis had been taken into custody. Um, well, this has been for me, you know, kind of a 10 year journey since we put out our doc uh, Murder Rap, um, which was the first documentary that put out his taped confession um, to, that, that his crew did this. And my reaction is that this has just been a very long time coming and um, very, very, it's just an exciting day to finally have this. We, we didn't think this was going to happen mm -hmm. um, at a certain point. It just seemed like so much time had gone by. Um, you started to wonder, is it really going to happen or not? Um, but the wheels of justice turn slowly sometimes. And that was the case here. And, but they, they got it done. You said that you thought an indictment would be coming, but now you're saying you didn't think this would ever happen. So uh, sure. do you feel like it was taking too long because we had heard some rumblings that a grand jury was looking at this? I'll just say, initially we had heard that it was going to happen very quickly. It seemed like, uh, it seemed like an indictment was, you know, six weeks ago an indictment was like happening and then, and then nothing. And we heard the grand jury was convening and, you know, it was very airtight. They're not telling us anything. I'm, you know, they aren't telling the public anything. So you do start to wonder after weeks and weeks go by if they're really going to pull it off or not. Mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, what kind of witnesses do you think they have? Because everybody else that was in that vehicle that night is dead. Sure. I know um, some of the people that they've spoken to, but I, I can't disclose that. But correct. I mean, all three of the other people that were allegedly with Keefe in the shooter's vehicle, they've all died since this happened. Um, some of the key witnesses like Tupac's bodyguard are, is dead. Tupac himself, of course, being the closest witness is dead. Suge Knight being the next closest witness will probably never talk about it. Um, so I don't know exactly who, who they've spoken to that could help them build, you know, a case around Keefe. But I do know that when Murder Rap came out, we re we heard from a lot of people that had information on this case mm -hmm. who that had never disclosed it before, who said that it basically filled in the gaps for them of what they already knew. So my guess is that that's who they've been talking to is people like that who have pieces of the story. And when you put them all together, it's like this tapestry that comes together mm -hmm. uh, of a case. In some of these interviews, Keefe D seemed very cognizant of the fact that he had to be careful about what he said. So he obviously knew that he still was at risk of possibly being prosecuted, but then he goes and writes this book. 
<laughs> right. Yeah, he when he did his interview with BET for Death Row Chronicles, which came out in 2018, he had an attorney with him uh, present for that interview. And then after that, I don't know how much legal counsel he was getting. It's almost like when that came out and nothing happened to him, I think, I, I wonder if maybe he got lulled into this sense of, oh, I guess they're not going to do anything. I'll just keep doing interviews and I'll be careful on my own and do what I think, you know, I can get away with saying without going too far. Um, but yeah, it seems clear. I mean, the fact that you bring a lawyer with you to an interview to make sure you don't say too much does tell you that he must have at least in the back of his mind considered that he might still be able to be prosecuted for this. Mm hmm. And the Proffer deal, when he did his original, you know, uh, statement to the police about this, you know, 15 years ago, that only covers what he says that day in that meeting. Mm -hmm. If he went on CNN that night and said the same story, they would be able to use that interview against him. So he, sure. I think he knows full well he had to be careful what he said. So what do you expect to come next? Um, obviously, Keefe D had to know something might be coming since a search warrant was executed on his home. Sure. We um, we don't know what the charges are yet. I'm hoping that if there's a um, that if there's a press conference today that they'll tell us what what he's actually being charged with and confirm, you know, of course, that it's for this case. Mm -hmm. um, and the next I I would think that he might want to do a deal or that they might be interested in doing a deal. I don't know anybody wants us to go to trial and have that circus uh, in Vegas. And so I, I, I would suspect that they would try to do a deal, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. The Associated Press is reporting that a judge ordered Keefe D held without bail. The prosecutor on the case was quoted as saying during the hearing that Keefe D was the on-site commander who ordered the death of Tupac Shakur. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.